So I, I know that everything's not perfect, not everything is great, but I think we need to take a second to appreciate where we are today compared to that of a year ago. Like, take America, for example. We're reopening up. People are making up for lost time. People going to restaurants more and more. People traveling more and more. Murders actually record-breaking. Maybe, and just hear me out here, we try to tone that one down, but I, I have an appreciation that yesterday one of the biggest stories had to do with Batman not going down on women. Like, yes, as we look to 2022 and 2024, democracy is still in peril, but we have to appreciate the fact that such a non-story ruled the day. That's the real return to normal. People sounding off online about things that don't really affect them. But also, that is gonna be the first story for today's Philip DeFranco show. Welcome, like, subscribe, all that stuff, but l let's jump into it. All right, so if you missed out on this, yesterday there was a writer for Variety who looked at how superhero stories were evolving in order to keep audiences engaged. And in this piece, there was an anecdote shared by a co-creator and producer behind the adult animated series Harley Quinn that got a lot of attention. With Justin Halpern discussing the show's unique focus on villains rather than heroes, and he said, it's incredibly gratifying and free to be using characters that are considered villains because you just have so much more leeway. And adding a perfect example of that is in this third season of Harley when we had a moment where Batman was going down on Catwoman. And DC was like, you can't do that. You absolutely cannot do that. They're like, heroes don't do that. So we said, are you saying heroes are just selfish lovers? And they were like, no, it's that we sell consumer toys for heroes. It's hard to sell a toy if Batman is also going down on something. And so that interview, that, that comment absolutely blew up. It went viral, people's minds blown. The biggest DC reveal in years. Batman is the DJ Khaled of the DC universe. Right, but with this, we saw people on both sides of the fence. Some people saying, okay, I understand why DC is doing this. We have to be protective of iconic characters, especially if we're trying to sell stuff to children. Then on the other side, you had people saying, no, heroes go down. Also, thing that it's weird to draw the line at oral sex, given that uh, they've actually allowed superheroes to engage in sex before. But some pointing out that even recently, back in 2016, they had no problem with Batman going at it with Batgirl for the animated film, Batman the Killing Joke. And ultimately, as far as my take on the situation, I just wanna say two things. One, I mean, look at the man. There's not a doubt in my mind that Batman fights and fucks his way through his emotional drama and he goes down on ladies because he craves control, control that he didn't have when his parents were killed in an alley when he was a child. Child. And two, the man put fucking handles on his head. I don't know how it could be more obvious. Then, and let's see how this transition goes, and another kind of going down news, let's talk about Chrissy Teigen. She's been the focal point of a lot of outrage and controversy, people taking her down for cyberbullying. Right, if you're unfamiliar with the situation, a lot of it stems from 10 years ago when you had Courtney Studd becoming the subject of a lot of headlines for marrying 51-year-old Doug Hutchinson at the age of 16. Now, they, as a couple, have since gotten a divorce, but at the time, they were incredibly controversial the media and the public in general, not treating Courtney kindly. But also, this past May, Courtney did an interview with the Daily Beast saying that big celebrities, including Tegan, were part of the online vitriol. Saying of Tegan, she wouldn't just publicly tweet about wanting me to take a quote, dirt nap, but would privately DM me and tell me to kill myself. Things like, I can't wait for you to die. People then digging up some of Tegan's old tweets to Courtney, which said, my Friday fantasy, you, dirt nap, mm, baby, and go to sleep forever. And so following this, Chrissy faced a lot of backlash. She ended up posting an apology, saying she was mortified and embarrassed. And then Chrissy was pretty much radio silent on Twitter for about a month until yesterday yesterday when she posted another apology on Medium regarding the whole situation, where she asked herself, how could I have done that? And adding, I'm in the process of privately reaching out to the people I insulted. I understand that they may not want to speak to me. I don't think I'd like to speak to me, but if they do, I am here and will listen to what they have to say while apologizing through sobs. And ultimately saying that there was no excuse for her post or the fact that she tried to justify being flat out mean is just edgy humor with her saying, I was a troll, full stop, and I am so sorry. In reality, I was insecure, immature, and in a world where I thought I needed to impress strangers to be accepted. If there was a pop culture pylon, I took to Twitter to try to gain attention and show off what I at the time believed was a crude, clever, harmless quip. Now, confronted with some of the things that I said, I cringe to my core. I'll honestly get sharp stabbing pains in my body, randomly remembering my asshole past, and I deserve it. But also, saying with this that she doesn't want or think that she deserves empathy. Writing, I'm not a victim here. The subjects of your sympathy and mine should be those I put down. The truth is, I'm no longer the person who wrote those horrible things. I grew up, got therapy, got married, had kids, got more therapy, experienced loss and pain. And like with a lot of situations, there were people on both sides, some saying that it was a great apology, accepting it. Though I will say that while this was partially for her fans, it really is mostly for the people that she bullied to either accept or not accept. And then on the other side of the fence, you had people saying, this is just her trying to save face as a way to come back. With some also saying that it's not just your word. That was because Tegan started to get more and more backlash after designer and former Project Runway contestant, Michael Costello, took to Instagram to talk about the bullying that he received from Tegan. 
Tegan. Saying that back in 2014, Tegan allegedly accused him on Instagram of being racist after seeing an online comment that it looked like he made, but he said was not real and had been photoshopped. Something that he said he tried to explain to her multiple times, but she never listened. And ultimately he said his career was over and he felt at one point like he wanted to commit suicide. Also claiming that Tegan and her stylist, Monica Rose, prevented him from getting gig after gig, shutting him out of fashion. And with that saying, so many nights I stayed awake wanting to kill myself. I didn't see the point of living. There was no way I can ever escape from being the target of the powerful elites in Hollywood who actually do have powers to close doors with a single text. But I'm also sharing a DM where Tegan allegedly told him that racist people like him deserve to suffer and die and that he might as well be dead because his career is. So that obviously ignited another wave of backlash for Tegan who has also not responded publicly to that specific situation yet. But from that, I wanna take a quick second to thank the sponsor of today's show, Drops. Have you ever noticed that smell in your workout gear that you just can't seem to get out? You know, that didn't I just wash this conversation you always have with yourself? Well, that is exactly where Drops comes in. Other detergents can't reach the bacteria trapped between the tight weave of active wear fabrics where sweat and odor linger. But Drops Active Wash is the perfect performance detergent designed for active wear and synthetic fabrics. With five active enzymes, this detergent cleans every type of stain from grass to blood and mud. And Drops anti permasting formula with odor control technology helps eliminate and prevent even weak old odors so they don't linger or reactivate with body heat. And Drops Active Wash detergent is available in Fresh Star, Rose, Energy, and Unscented, and is designed to protect your high-tech fabrics, making them last longer. And for your convenience, Drops delivers eco-friendly cleaning products directly to your door that contain plant-based ingredients. The products are effective and great for the planet with carbon-neutral shipping and compostable packaging. So what are you waiting for? Check them out. Go to drops.com slash defranco to save 25% off your first order with code defranco25. Limit one use per customer. Enjoy. Then, in business entertainment news, we're seeing Spotify's land grab for podcasts continuing with them now scooping up Alex Cooper's Call Her Daddy podcast, which, I mean, absolutely makes sense. Even with it not being an exclusive, last year it was the fifth most popular podcast on Spotify. So they scooped it up for an exclusive licensing deal, right? Cut out the other players, drive more people to something that's already popular on their platform for a deal that according to Variety is a three year, $60 million deal. And it appears that all of this is also happening way faster than it happened with Joe Rogan with a statement this morning saying that Call Her Daddy will be exclusive to Spotify as of July 21st. And this deal, it's interesting interesting for the space in general, but also, I mean, props to Alex Cooper for, for handling this. Right? I mean, I started today's show talking about comparing now to just last year. Last year, I mean, I don't know if you're a fan of that show. I also covered it on mine. There was an ugly contract renegotiation happening with her and her co-host and Barstool at the time. She ended up navigating that situation successfully, keeping her podcast, choosing to host it herself. And now this deal reportedly doesn't even include Barstool at all. Right, and while that last part might rub some in her community the wrong way, right? The, the Barstool fan base is hardcore. Unless there is some other shoe that is yet to drop, I, I don't think that it will make this an unsuccessful podcast. Then, in the least surprising headline of all time, why is this even news? Mitch McConnell says a GOP-controlled Senate would not fill a Supreme Court vacancy in 2024. The other headline to this is Mitch McConnell still Mitch McConnell. What do you, what did you expect? Right, and so with this story, I'm not even gonna share the clip of him saying this in an interview because the whole thing is calculated and I think it's more important to talk about why he made these calculated statements. Right, he's making these remarks amid growing calls from progressives for Justice Stephen Breyer, the oldest Scottish judge to retire, which he has largely brushed aside. Right, and this is a really sensitive thing for Democrats. Right now, the Supreme Court already now has a supermajority that is conservative. And this believed by a number of people because Supreme Court justices did not retire when they should have retired, i.e. when Democrats had power. And so that's why when asked, you have people like Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez saying, yes, she is inclined to say yes, that Breyer should step down. So McConnell's statement here kind of accomplishes two things for him. One, it potentially broadens divisions in the Democratic Party between progressives and more traditional liberals who are more hesitant to rush Breyer off the court, while also simultaneously working to unite a fractured Republican base and encourage them to turn out in the midterm so they can retake power. And I will say, if you're a Democrat, or really, I would say you're just kind of anti-Trump Republican, don't get complacent. When the time comes, you should take this threat seriously. They're not fractured to the point of inaction. They're just waiting. And then, in easily the most requested story out of the last 24 hours, let's talk about this story out of Australia. Right, so at the center of this story, you have the police in New South Wales, Australia, arresting the producer of popular YouTuber Friendly Geordies earlier this month for what they claimed was stalking the state's deputy premier. To get to this point, this story actually starts in 2019 during Australia. Australia's devastating bushfire season. At that time, you had friendly Jordies, AKA Jordan Shanks, a political satire YouTuber with about a half a million subscribers, absolutely blasting Premier Gladys Berejiklian for the state's response to the fires. And among saying other things, he called her koala killer because of all the animals that died in those fires. That then prompted her deputy premier, John Barillaro, to criticize the use of that phrase on Sydney radio. Then June 18th of last year, Shanks posted a video reacting to that. Holy shit. You don't
know what that means. He's upset by it. And then Shanks, who's known for over-the-top impressions of politicians, goes on to impersonate Barilaro, uh, adopting a heavily exaggerated Italian accent, repeatedly swearing. This is for the good of the state. We must continue to trigger John Barilaro. If he thinks, Oh my God, what do you call a koala killer? What the fuck's the body? I don't see the koala. Where's the fucking DNA evidence, bros? From there, Barilaro himself directly responds to the video calling Shanks' impersonation very offensive and racist. But uh, the back and forth did not stop there. In September, Shanks actually rents an Airbnb property owned by Barilaro. And while there, Shanks accused him of corruption and environmental vandalism while continuing to do the exaggerated accent. After this, in May, Shanks revealed that Barilaro actually sent him a letter back in December threatening to sue him for defamation. With Shang saying the deputy premier really likes destroying the environment and he's using his office to enrich himself. I make fun of him for this, so naturally his response was to call me racist for putting on an Italian accent while doing so. In that same video, Shanks then shows a clip of him confronting Barilaro while dressed as Luigi. And there, as Shanks is guided away by guards, his producer, Christo Lanker, then begins arguing with the guards while trying to speak to Barilaro. John, I've got some documents you might want to see. Yeah. Back it out here. I got an Italian plot. Lanker then continues to try to push through to Barilaro. The whole situation seems very tense. The guards are visibly angry. And ultimately with this, we see Lanker actually managed to speak to Barilaro, who then says, I want to know why you are threatening to sue. You're suing? You're suing? You're suing? Why are you suing? Because you're, 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 you guys are Do you realize who? And at the end of May, Barilaro launches official defamations proceedings against Shanks. And all of that now brings us to this month when Lanker was arrested by plainclothes officers while at his home on June 4th. And this, reportedly on charges of stalking and intimidating Barilaro during two situations. The first being the event where Shanks was dressed as Luigi and Lanker repeatedly tried to force his way to Barilaro. With the second reportedly happening just hours before the arrest when Lanker approached Barilaro at a funeral. And while this was already an escalation to a very tense situation. The arrest has also made things even more tense by the fact that Lanker's lawyer has accused the police of assaulting his mother during the arrest. And actually, regarding that, in a video uploaded by Shanks yesterday, we were able to see cell phone video of that arrest. Right, Mom, you can take my phone. No, you can take my phone. No, take my phone. We told I've you to hand you. over the phone. I have got witnesses. You handed it to her. I tripped over you. You pushed That's me what down in my own home. No, I didn't. You my absolutely environment. That's all. Also, regarding the dog, the dog actually wasn't dead, but the family still accused the police of nearly killing it. Also, blasting the police for setting what they said were utterly extreme bail conditions for Lanker, which reportedly prohibit him from possessing images or even caricatures of Barilaro and commenting on his personal appearance or behavior. Shanks also condemning the arrest, noting that the police who arrested Lanker are from the counter terror unit, even referring to them as an extra legal mafia, which actually on that note, isn't the first time that that unit has faced criticism. It's been described as Orwellian and as looming in the shadow of Big Brother. As far as what happens from here, you have Lanker set to appear in court on the 24th. Friendly Jordy is releasing a video where he's also trying to raise money for a legal fund. As of right now, Barilaro has declined to comment on the arrest, though he was the one who filed the police complaint that led to it. But ultimately with this story and honestly, anything else I talked about today, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below because one, this is a conversation and two, this is the end of today's show. As always, thank you for being a part of this. Watch and like and subscribe into the videos. And of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.